What's good, man? It's your boy, Light Boy, and I just jumped up the porch with Dirty Gold Bastard. Yes, sir. Cool. Good. Hey, no, 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 yeah. But they're calling your phone. I'm on the road, 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 yeah. All right, so we got Light Boy off the porch with us today. How you feeling, man? Great. You? Good. Yeah, I'm feeling good, man. I appreciate good. you coming by today, man. Sure. Yeah. So let's take it back, man. You were born in Nigeria? Sure. What city are you from? Abuja. I'm actually out born in Abuja, but I'm from Ogun State. Okay. So how would you describe uh, growing up there? Growing up there is tough, yo. Like, it's, it's the African neighborhood. Like, you're growing up, you got to go to school, got to wake up in the morning and just, like, go with the flow of African culture. Like, growing up is just really tough. Like, it's really tough. To make it out there and me doing music is like a whole different path <laughs> from what my parents want me to do so like so what did they want you to do be a doctor <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah be a lawyer yeah like it's a whole different yeah did you grow up in a big city um nah but i kind of moved to a bigger city like because my dad was like a entrepreneur so he was like everywhere okay. and i was moving my dad because my mom came here like about 10 years ago yeah so like i was just it was everywhere at a point yeah yeah what's your thoughts on the uh, the nsars movement that's going on out um, there in nigeria right now the nsars to be honest we just need help like i'm talking about not in the country we need help outside the country like we need america's help we just need like countries to come together and just help nigeria because the government is really bad like really corrupt even to the president, yeah, all government. We got thirty six states and a and a um president, and like the government is really corrupt. Like, nah, we need help. Like for real, we do. Do you still have family out there? Yeah, I do. Okay, they kind of tell you what's going on yep. out there and everything. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's crazy, bro. Um, crazy, so when did bro. you move to Atlanta? Um, I moved about four years ago. Okay. About four years ago. I moved to Atlanta to actually continue my school, but I know what I had in my mind. Like, I know what I had in mind to do, but at the same time, you know, my parents wanted to like keep going to school and go to college and all that. But yeah, I was. Where'd you go to college at? Um, I did not go to college. Oh, you actually. didn't go. I did not go. Actually, what happened was I got through high school back in Nigeria, and when I came, they were like, "Oh, I don't recommend some of the subjects." Like, you got to go back and go take some subjects. I had to go back to, like, 11th grade and Absolutely. go take some subjects and shit. So, like, I had to go back. And when I was doing high school, I was like, yo, I really want to do me. Like, I finally came. I had all the resources on my face. Like, what am I doing, yo? Like, back in Nigeria, I couldn't even I couldn't even get a mic. So, like, here, I can order a mic. I can get my little setup. Like, hell, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this shit, like, ASAP. Yeah. yeah. So, what did you think of Atlanta when you first moved here? And when I first moved, everything was like a movie, yo. Like, everything was like a movie. I'm even talking about, because I moved to the hood side. <laughs> like, in Union City type shit, like, south side. Okay. But it was America, like, oh my God, street light everywhere, like, banners everywhere. Like, yo, I'm in America, yo. But with time, like, every, I just got used to everything. I was, like, seeing the difference between my side and downtown and, like, going out the states. And I'm like, oh, okay, there's actually a difference between this state like but it was it was really cool when i came my friend like my first month here oh i was i had to i'll be calling all my friends back home too like yo i'm here bro like oh i'm here bro like yeah it was, i was turning up yeah did you already know how to speak english when you moved here yeah i've been know how to speak english. okay okay but it's like we speak a lot of we speak a lot of languages so it's like the, the language has to do with your English too. Like you can't speak it fluently like you, like Americans do, because Americans just speak English, you know. Mm -hmm. But back home we speak like I speak four languages. Oh really? Yeah. What other languages you speak? I speak Yoruba. I speak Pidgin. I speak a little bit of French, and I, I pray in Arabic. I used to be a Muslim. I'm from a Muslim family. My my last name is actually Muslim Salam. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So was it an easy transition adjusting to the American lifestyle? Nah. <laughs> nah. It wasn't. At all, cause when I came, the first restaurant I went to was McDonald's, and like I was trying to get a 
I was trying to get a burger, but I didn't know like the name of the burger. It was a it was a Big Mac kind of thing, but I was talking and the lady was like, uh, uh, like five times. And I was like, yo, how am I going to talk? Like, I know what I'm saying. And like, I'm like, I'm saying it, but she don't hear me. So I'm like, all right. So I tapped on my phone and I'm like, I'm trying to get this. Like, I'm trying to get this on my phone. And she said, oh, that's what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah. But it was really hard too. Like my friend, like when I went to high school too, people be calling me like a kind of boy and shit. Like the African boy. Cause my accent was so strong. But guess what? When class, when we have tests, when I do, when I do tests in like English classes, I'll be taking first. You're like, damn, like, this dude, this nigga don't know, this nigga can't speak English fluently, but he's taking first in class, like, how the fuck African dude, dude, like, what the hell? But I be like, that shit wasn't easy at all, yo, like, nah, that English shit, nah. And I, you can still hear my accent too, but, you know, it's it's way different from when I came here, like, it's way different. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take you to uh, transition to get like, adjusted pretty well? Like. Two years. Okay. Yeah, I had to be. I had to change my circle too, cause like when I'm at home, I speak till now. I speak my native language to my mom. Yeah. So, and my mom didn't even want me to be going out like that. So like, I need to be around Americans. Like, I need to be around like people that speak American English to like adjust and shit. So I went on this app called Live Me Too. I made friends there at school too. I started making like a little friend, little friends, just like get my English better and shit. So yeah. and then now. I can at least Americans can hear me now. Like I can talk and we can have an all conversation and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Are there a lot of Nigerians here in Atlanta? Um, there's a lot of Nigerians, but I ain't know no Nigerian when I came. I mean, just <laughs> wait. Yeah, I I ain't know no Nigerian. The dude, the African dude, I know he was like the man or something. He was like from Ghana or some shit. So like, it was kind of hard to like find Nigerian. But later when I found Nigerian, then we was you know. Yeah. But now I got Nigerian fans. I got a lot of Nigerian fans over here now. Like, okay. Yeah. So how long you been making music now? Um, I took it seriously about a year. Okay. But I really want to do music like about about ten years ago. Yeah. About ten years ago, like I've been wanting to do music. Like there was a time where you know a lot of family shit and that was been going on, and I'm like, yo. I want to do music, but I don't got nothing to do. So like, I got this Nokia phone. This it got a touch light on the top. So I be recording myself and shit. And my dad be seeing my phone and be like, "Give me that phone." So my dad be taking my phone. Then I went to the point of writing my shit. Like I had a notebook where I be writing my shit. And my dad took my shit, yo. Like I could not record. I could not do nothing, yo. Like, and I've been wanting to do it since I was like eleven. Yeah, eleven. What type of music did you grow up listening to? Were you listening to rap and hip hop? Or? Um, nah, I wish I did, but it was I was into like more Afrobeat. Okay, it was more of like the music I was around, like the music that was around me. I didn't really go. I had friends that listened to like American music, but it wasn't really like back home. You don't really got internet like that. Hmm. Like, so you gotta pay for the internet, and like it's really like expensive, like. It's like right now you're like paying a hundred dollars, like a uh, hundred and fifty a month for internet. Yeah. Like that's kind of like pricey. Like a hundred and fifty for a month just to get internet on your phone. That's kind of pricey. Like nah. So I ain't really, I ain't really go out to like stream songs and shit. It's just all the songs that if I see people sharing the CD, I just begin the CD and just play that shit. So it's like more of the music that's around me that I be listening to. Like I don't really go out like that. To, you know. Yeah. So did you start listening to rap as soon as you came here to Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. What'd you think of it? Um, it was dope because I started listening to like Lil Baby and Gunna because you know I was in Atlanta, so like I was into like the songs around. And now like yo, that's one of my favorite Archer. Like Lil Baby's one of my favorite like Atlanta rappers and shit. Yeah, Gunna, all them, Lil Key, all of them. Yeah. So how'd you get the name Light Boy? Um, I got the name Light Boy from the element light. Hmm. Cause I feel like back home, we don't get power like that. I'm talking about the power coming sudden. Like we just be sitting at home with our candles and shit. Like, cause we use candles in the house, like, like light for light. Hmm. So we just be sitting at home and then boom, power just come. Hey, yeah, yeah, let go, let go, let go on TV. Boom, they took that shit off. Damn, bro. So it's like a lot of places in Nigeria don't have power like that. 
So we really need light, you know, like we really need light in the house to like do shit. And just imagine like the world without light, what would it be, you know? Mm-hmm. So I just feel like anywhere I go, it's like I've been light to things, like, I've been light to the community, like, you know. So it's actually the word L I G A T, but I just put my sauce into that shit, like, okay, I'm gonna put it L I T E, light boy. Yeah. So I just, yeah. So how would you describe your sound of music that you make? My sound of music. It's fire. Like, I came up with my shit at, at a point, because when I started, I was trying to be like my, you know, I was trying to be like people I look up to. I was trying to sound like them. I was trying to do this, do that, do that. And my manager really got me a lot. Like, it really helped me and my producers. Shout out Mika Beats, yo. Shout out Darrell, my manager. Shout out DJ Ron Viper, too, because, like, they really helped me a lot with my sound yeah. and just do what I see live, because I'm really from a whole different surrounding and when i came here like i'm seeing a whole different side of life because when i came here i really started all over from zero because hmm. like my sounds i had to develop that shit with me like i just came up with that shit yeah does anyone else make the same type of music that you make or is yours mm-hmm. kind of one of a no guy? it's one of point shit <laughs> hell yeah anybody do that shit. nah what's some of your goals for your music career um i want to inspire people I don't let them know that you can do this shit. Like, if you put your mind into it, you can do it. I really like, I traveled miles away. I never knew I was gonna be here. Like, I traveled miles away to actually chase my dream. And I got a, I got miles to go, like, I got a long way to go. Cause like, you can do it, you know? Like, so I'm just trying to inspire people, you know, I'm trying to just get up there and just, collab with one of my, you know, one of the artists I look up to and just, just get up there and just do, do what I love and just actually do what I love full time and just go crazy with it. Yeah. Yeah. So are your parents supportive of you doing music now or are they still? Now they do. Actually, my dad got my song as his ringtone right now. Really? But guess what? Back home, he be throwing my phone away. <laughs> oh, back, like, well, what happened was one time he called me, it was like, I told, not. I think, yeah, he called me. So I was like, Dad, I was, I was doing music, something like that, something like that. He was like, yo, why did you still doing music? I told you to start doing that. So I sent him my song, right? And then he was talking to my, I think he was on the phone with my big sister too, or like one of his aunties or some shit. So they heard the song and they was like, damn, this song is actually fire. Like, this song is actually good. So he called me back. He was like, this song is actually good. Like, you should keep doing it. Like, I support it. And then he got my phone. He said, I should send you more music. I'm like, okay, I'm going to send you when I drop it. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to let you know. So now they support my... My mom didn't even want me to go to the studio. <laughs> it came to a time where I had to like... I, to keep, I had a whole problem with my mom, yo. Like, And my manager helped me a lot with this shit. Because like, I couldn't even go to the studio at the point. I had to tell my manager, man, yo, can you call my mom real quick? Can I go to the studio at like 2 a.m.? I'm going to tell my mom, hello, mom. I'm gonna be home like around 11 p.m. I'm gonna go to see around 5. I'm gonna be back around 11. 11 p.m. I'm gonna read my phone. Uh, I'm gonna be back like around 12. 12 going to, I'm gonna just sleep over in the studio. <laughs> I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Like, that shit was, but now she, you know, she can let me go to the studio. I can sleep over in the studio two days, three yeah. days. Putting that work. How'd you link up with your manager? Um, how I linked up with him was, I think I was going through Instagram, right? Then I came across an ad or something like that. That's to do with like artist management and shit. And that was the time I was trying to take music serious. Like I dropped the song and I'm like, yo, how can I push this shit? Cause my sound is different. And it's like, it's really hard for me to like get people to listen to my sound. So I'm like, I actually need a management cause I'm taking this shit serious. Like I need someone, I need a team. I need to be a team so I can go up there. Cause I really can't do this shit alone. Like I know a lot of people make it look like, oh, you can do it alone. You can do it alone. But at the same time, like you got hella people behind you to push you up. So I find him on Instagram and I hit him up. I'm like, yo, I like what y'all are doing. Cause they had they, like, their page was really like, it was a whole set of like, this shit look professional. I want a prof- prof- uh, professional shit on my team. Like I want professionals on my team. So. Um, I just hit him up and he set up a meeting and I was like, okay, let's do it. Hmm. So we set up a meeting, we met at the um restaurant and we just talked. They were like, damn, you actually fuck with your sound. And I'm like, and they was actually, they was actually fucking with me. I'm like, okay, let's work. And just, the rest was just history. Like, 
you're talking about. I started going to the studio more, like, two, three days. And I was working nine to five, so at the same time, so it's like, when I get off work, boom, studio. Weekend, my manager gonna call my manager be on my ass too, like, yo, where you at right now, bro? Hey, get in the studio, I want you in the studio. Like, <laughs> hell yeah, yeah. Your first single was With You, right? Yep. Okay, what can you tell us yeah. about that song? Actually, that song, I came up with that song when I was on my game, yo. So I started this PS4, and I saw a girlfriend then, so, I was playing a game and then it was in a party, like a party chat. You know how you be talking to people on, on, on PS4? Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was just singing, I was just freestyling. So I got a dude who was making songs together too, but you, you, you're an American, you, you rap to so like two different sounds. I be singing. So like sometimes we do freestyling, I'm gonna take the hook because I'm really good on the hook side. So they're gonna rap. I'm gonna sing hook, they're gonna rap. So I just came up with, be with you, go, all I want is you, nobody else but. And they were like, oh shit. Like, bro, I'm about to record this shit. I just recorded that shit. The first tick was with my headset. Oh, yeah. Like, the first tick was with my headset. And then I had a mic on the way, like a $20 mic. <laughs> I got it off Amazon. $20 mic. I settled that shit, went to my basement. Recorded that shit around like 3 p.m. Like, I said 3 p.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. Cause I had to wait. Cause my, I be, I be, I be recording in my room. But my mom be like, I'm too loud. So I gotta go to the basement. <laughs> So I'm going to the basement and trying to take this shit, trying to record. Then I'll be on Audacity too, trying to record that shit. That shit was actually recorded on Audacity. Oh, wow. With a $20 mic. Yeah. Yeah. How was the feedback on that song? Were people messing with it? Hell yeah. yeah. That was when I got my mom to actually fuck with my sound because my mom was like, oh, damn, she yeah. like the song. Yep. Thank you. All right. What can you tell us about your upcoming EP, 1999? Uh, I don't think they're ready for this shit because, <laughs> like, I was gonna, I was gonna drop this EP around March, but then COVID nineteen came, and actually before COVID nineteen, I've been going to twenty twenty before even COVID nineteen came through, cause I got my first accident in January, hmm. like January eleven. So my first accident was like, damn, twenty twenty gonna be crazy, bro, cause this wasn't my plan for twenty twenty. Like I got a whole different plan now. Accident gonna happen, and then COVID nineteen, and then people protesting, like. So for my manager was my ad, my manager was like, yo. Don't let shit get to you, bro. You're gonna do this shit. I want you to get in the studio. I want you to just like, just listen to a lot of music, do vocal pra practice. Like, I be actually doing vocal practice, like, improve my voice and shit. So, I began to studio a lot and my sound just actually changed. Like, I actually see the difference. Like, with you and the song and the EP right now, you, you're gonna hear the difference. Like, I just, you're gonna hear the difference. Yeah. But it's a lot different. I don't think people are ready for this shit because this is actually dope. I put a lot. I put a lot of work into this shit. Like, yeah. Do you know what your single's gonna be off the EP? Um. Ah, oh, I got, I got all the songs are dope. Like, um, probably like Broken Child or like Let Me Go. Those two songs are like. Cause the feedback I got in the studio, just in the studio, like was was amazing. So I feel like it's gonna take off. Yeah. But all the songs are gonna take off regardless, but you know, some be having exclamation marks in it. So you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh what producers did you work with on the EP? My boy his song, shout out his song, man. That dude in Nigeria. <laughs> that nigga. Shout out his song. I got Rainstorm. And Mika Beats, Mika Beats, she got like, we got three songs on the EP. Okay. Yeah, three songs, Mika Beats really helped me a lot. Like, even with my sound, like, we've been in vocal warm-ups, I gotta, like, just get my voice right. I've been in the studio, like, all day, just trying to get one song right. Cause we gotta get the feeling, it's about the feeling. It's not really about what I say in the song like that. I mean, that matters too, but like, you gotta feel my shit. Like, if you don't feel it, what's the point? Yeah. 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 All right. So, shout so out all of them. Hell yeah. So Elite Vibe Music Group. What's that? That's who you're signed to? Yep. Okay. Hell yeah. How'd that come about? Um, that was through my management too. Okay. They just seen my sound, this is what I'm up to, and they know that I'm i I'm really taking this shit serious. Like, if I'm not taking it serious, because a lot of people do this shit, I just just do it. Like they just make me I got a lot of friends to do music. <laughs> but it's like it's a whole different thing when you take music serious, like if you really want to do it. Yeah. So my, I just spoke to my manager about it, like, yo, how can we get to the next level? Because I'm really like about, I don't, I really don't care how long it's gonna take. 
as long as I'm just putting that work and just consistent with it and I know like I'm really doing what I love to do like yeah so that just came through yeah you just set me up with a live vibe it was up yeah the rest is three yeah yeah what advice would you give some upcoming artists some I'm gonna just just be consistent like just keep doing what you know I know I know it's really hard because like a lot of people this you know when you drop a song it's like most you don't get support like you really want you know so that really be bringing you down like i really went through that shit too where i drop a song it's like just a few people like five people listen to my shit like i had to go look up hashtags and start sharing my things like sharing my links and everything so i'm gonna just say be consistent and just believe in yourself like if you know you can do it you're gonna do it like yeah just believe in yourself all right yep I right, got the new EP coming out. What else are you working on right now? You know what's crazy? I got a whole album. Really? Yeah. I I worked on a whole album. I actually worked on two projects this whole time. Hmm. It's like February. Yeah. I was on like two projects. And I'm actually about to work on another one. Oh, wow. So 2020, 2021 should be... I already got something for 2021. Yeah. But yeah, I got a whole album. Like The sound is just crazy. Because like, when people listen to this EP... And then when I drop my singles, like, this shit was fun to take up. Yeah. Because I got a whole album about like 10 songs. And that was what I was going to push out. But my manager was like, hold on. You, the whole world is going through a lot of shit right now. Like, 2021 wasn't the whole plan because we was going to turn up. Like, we had a lot of club songs. We had a lot of boom, like, a lot of good shit that you going to dance and just dance your sorrow away, yo. But... When we seen the whole thing that was going on, like in the world, it was like, okay, yo, light boy, you gotta go, you gotta take them back home, yo. Like you gotta talk, you guys gotta talk some shit and just let them know, like, what you what you been through, you know, how things been going. And just tell them about life and like just how people can just go through it. Just you know, don't let this shit get to them and just just go with the world, like you know, just let the sorrow just go and just, but. Yeah, we just the EP ninety ninety nine. My manager actually came up with that shit. We was on the phone, and I was like, "Yo, I got a lot of I got a lot of titles in my head. What should I name this EP?" I'm like, I'm like I so I came up, but I came up with I was born ninety ninety nine, and I really just want to take them from the start. So I'm like, this is my first EP too. So it's like, let me just really take them back home and just take them from like where I really came from. So I said, okay, let's do it ninety ninety nine, like. Five songs on EP. Okay. Yep. Yes. Shit's gonna be crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any shout outs before we wrap it up? For sure. Hey, shout out my manager, man. Without my manager, I would not be here. Shout out my manager, Darrell. Shout out DJ Ron, my other manager. DJ Ron Viper. Vibe. And shout out Maker Beats. Shout out Ellie Vibe. 800 management and my producers that that put me through shit because these two producers they're back home so like i'll be waiting for beats i'll be waiting for them to sign contract i went like one month two months for them to sign contract shout out hit sound shout out rainstorm and shout out to my family shout out to my mom for you know finally fucking with my sound shout out to my my dad too but yeah and my friends and family and my supporters we going up for sure. And shout out DJ Glove Bastard, man. Like, this should really dream come through, yo. Cause I really be watching y'all on YouTube. Oh yeah. I, I watch y'all on YouTube. Like, shout out y'all, man. Like, without y'all, this shit really crazy, yo. The way things are going right now, I'm just like, yo, that's crazy. But well, I'm really here. Hey, no, 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 yeah. But they calling your phone, I'm on the road, 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 yeah. Keeping on love